whole thought thing. Um, so with Trump saying what he was saying, um, what he would do when he gets back into office, which I definitely, you know, I have to be in agreement with it. I like what he was, you know, what he's trying to do. He's wanting to deport, do a mass deportation of uh, illegal immigrants. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I am all for that. However, I do want to talk about uh, some of the things that he was saying that would, it would entail. So, first things first, the cost. The, I think he was saying about a trillion dollars. Now, uh, that's a lot of money, in my opinion. <laughs> For me, that is a ton of money. Um, for a government, that's still a lot of money. Especially for a government or a country who's already in so much debt as it is right now. It's uh, kind of mind-blowing how much debt we already are in and how much we just keep adding to it. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous. It really is. So, does that mean that our taxes are going to go up even more? Because, I'm, guys, it's, it, it's it's hard enough as it is right now. Things just keep getting more and more expensive. But, that's, you know, that's just, that's what he's saying the cost is going to be. He's being up front about it. Another thing that he was saying is he's, you know, using active duty military
on the other foot, the, on the other hand, we were doing it for a good cause for the country. Obviously, if California goes against this, they're not going to be doing it for a good cause for the country. So, while circumstances are different, they are also the same, in a way. So, that's why I am having an issue on where I stand with that, is just because I am in Texas, I do live in Texas, and I fully supported what we did. So, that being said, you know, we could have been really close to a civil war in Texas if the federal government actually tried to do something, like, forcefully. And if we shot back, that could have, been, you know, that could have erupted into its own civil conflict right there. So, what's to say that these blue cities and or states might not, or what's to say that they won't fire back, you know, trying to defy. So, could that potentially spark a uh, civil conflict right there? I don't know. Just something to think about. Because it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's a probability, but it's a possibility. Now the other thing is what Biden did with his executive order. I don't remember how many illegals need to be encountered for it to go into effect, but I think his executive order, BS, just prevents new illegals from filing for uh, asylum. I think that's literally all it does. And obviously we're going into an election, so he, you know, he knows he is looking like complete dog shit. You know, he knows the country sees him as that. So he's, you know, in my opinion, he's trying to do something to get his numbers up. Not like it's really going to help a whole lot. But some people might see it as, oh, yeah, he's actually doing something, so, you know, maybe I will vote for him. I'm not, obviously. But that's maybe that's what some um, liberals or in the middle, they don't know who exactly they're going for. Maybe that'll, you know, persuade them to vote for him. Hopefully it doesn't because it's really not going to do a lot of anything my opinion but that might help get his numbers up a little bit but it's still looking pretty strong for Trump which is a good thing but again I don't know exactly too sure how I feel on his uh, on how he's wanting to deport all these people I do agree with deporting all of them. You know, if you're here illegally, then you're here illegally. You know, you're, you're in the wrong. You shouldn't be here. You know, go back and try again legally. Or don't try again. Try again legally. I don't have an issue with immigrants. You know, the United States was founded on immigrants. But do it the legal way. Don't just come across the border and be like, I'm here illegally. Don't. That's not the way to do it. So, the other thing is the whole H5N2, the, uh, the bird flu. Um, we had that one guy down in Mexico City, I believe it was Mexico City, who died at least with H5N2 bird flu. I'm not going to say that he died from it. I am not a legal medical expert, so that just needs to be said. But 
I don't want anyone to overthink this whole bird flu thing and think that it's worse than it is. Because, as, you know, as we all probably already know, he already had a multitude of issues. You know, he was bedridden already. He had a lot of pre-existing issues. I think he had kidney failure or something along those lines. He was in a bad place health-wise already. Um, and it looked like he was already on his way out. The fact that he had bird flu as well, it's only giving them ammunition. already looking at this uh, the whole vaccine things for this so um, how are we going to deal with that um, are we gonna go into the exact same things that we did with 19 are we gonna do that that same whole uh, song and dance again with the shutdowns and the almost destroying of the economy and a lot of people losing their jobs and a lot of people losing their jobs after the fact because they wouldn't get the thing and I already said it but I'm not going to say it again. Are we going to go through that exact same thing again? If we are, is it going to be worse? Are we going to go through it even more strict? Are different states going to push back again? Different cities going to push back again? We shall see, but uh, learning from 19, we should all already be prepared for this. Already have things that we need. Already have the experience from it. So, you know, we're going to do what we're going to do. And uh, we're just waiting to see for it to go from one death to 15 deaths to 73 to 180 to 5,000 to 25,000 to 280,000 to a million. I'm just waiting for it to do that again. Did with uh, 19. So if it does it, you know, pray for the best, prep for the worst, do as we do, 